It's fair to say Ocean Dunes has been a lifetime in the making. More, actually. First, weather and wind and the ocean had to have their way with the west coast of the island. Then the land had to be discovered, seen for what it could be, not what it was. This has been, for me, 11 years in the making, looking for land in South Gippsland and then finally finding something on King Island and being amazed at the coast on King Island, 64 kilometres of, of coastal lynx lands that I don't think we have anywhere else in this country. There are four tea options at Ocean Dunes, enough to suit every level of player, but also to combat the change in conditions. You can get it like this, stillish, close to perfect, but when the wind blows, it turns into a monster. Paul, of all the things in life you've looked forward to, where do you place golf on King Island? Well, it's up there because so many tour pros have told me so many good things about this. So about three years since this golf course has been in the making. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, yeah. I, it's the one thing I've never heard a bad <laughs> thing about. Right. Like, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about golf here and golf at Cape Wickham. So this is just heaven. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, I will barely be able to swing a club. I've got a new ball. Right. I don't know how long I'll <laughs> keep it because it looks pretty good. So I'll let you go first. All right. And just... But this is a moment. Like, this is a life moment. Good and luck. And you're doing it with me. Right. What Ocean Dunes does give the golfer is the opportunity to be creative. Imagination is the key here. Being able to see new avenues to the hole is not only half the fun, it's what you need to get around the course. So Graham, the designer, said that this is not a signature hole. Well, that's a matter of opinion, isn't it? A signature hole. This looks like a signature hole. I think there's a number of signature holes that I've already seen. Yeah, yeah. But that, this is very pebble beach-like. It's just got that feel of pebble beach. You're right on the ocean. It is just there. And the way that he's just come around the, uh, the peninsula is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Shot, Andrew. That is gold. Every golfer has the chance to hit career shots in a gobsmacking setting. The ocean and the dunes vie for your attention. There will be moments when the golf is secondary. Standing here, I feel like I've been dropped into one of those golf books. You know, like amazing... Yeah. Well, you have been. Oh, I'm really... This like... is so picturesque, it's amazing. 120 metres, you're perched out here on the peninsula. The depth of this green isn't very deep, so the pin just looks like it's sitting on a yeah. little mound. And, and this is the signature hole, so this is the one. So Graham's saying, you know, they want you to go away and remember the rocks, remember the ocean, yeah. and remember the green perched out there. We think that the, the golf courses are going to be the single thing that reinvigorates King Island and gets people coming to King Island rather than their wonderful produce being exported. The world will come and see what it is here. The tenth hole, so it's par three, 200 metres from the back. Talk me through this as a, as a golf hole, like what, what he's doing, what he's making us do. Well, it's really well designed. You're heading across the bay on all these three tees, and further up there, you still got to go over the corner. But the interesting bit is that all the trouble's here, but because the dunes are up to the right, he's swept it around to go feeding down into the middle of the green. Right. So you can get on the green, but there's two bunkers up there in the front left-hand side. You don't want to take them on. It's scary. But it's beautiful, like you can see it's beautiful. Like, you know, you've got the, the wildflowers, the pig face and the succulents and the, the ocean and it's still seagulls scary. and... There's water in front of me, Andrew, so it's scary. Oh. That, that'll feed right down. That'll come down somewhere there. Great shot. Now, not long hole, this is the 11th. After seeing it now, coming over the rise, it's got to be one of my favourites. Oh. Massive landing area here, so everyone can get on the fairway, but that's not the best bit of the hole. It's that green. It runs from front to back. It looks like it's just hovering on the water. Yeah, just sitting there like a, you know? It, it's incredible. You know, it can run off to the left, but it's, uh, it's a pretty hole. So, Gowie, 18th hole, nearly halfway through my golfing fantasy. <laughs> you enjoying being in the fantasy? Uh, well, maybe. I've enjoyed the golf course. It's been spectacular. And, and this is the thing. So you get to the 18th hole and there's still surprises because we haven't really seen anything like this and it's yeah. still and, you know, we're in the middle of the sand dunes. And... Well, you, can, you can just hear the ocean from here, but you, you could be on a different golf course. In fact, this is the only hole you can't see the ocean from the tee. Start 
stay there. Oh, Gowie! It's not bad. I'm going to give you that. Hey. How much fun was that? I loved it. All right, so did I. I loved it. That golf course is spectacular. Yeah, and something special for you. Yep. For dinner. Right. Food like you've never had. We're halfway through the King Island golfing experience. A favourite part so far? Oh, there's been so many, but for me, who loves golf courses, the fescue. I love playing fescue. The, the surrounds, the greens, the tees. But then you've got these bent greens that sit there. The platforms are easy to get to. It's just beautiful. And then beautiful. those tees just sit on the ocean. Yeah. Where do you get that? Like, it, it just reminded me of Pebble Beach. And... Yeah. And then you've got the King Island Golf Club here. Yeah. Right off Boom. So this is Boomerang Restaurant. Yeah. Right off here. So nine holes, you know, shared green. And so this is beautiful. Before there was golf here, not this golf, yeah. but the other two courses, there was this. And this is what yeah. King Island's famous for before these two golf courses. Are you a seafood eater? I'm not really, no. It's a disaster. Yeah, it was not, not Try the abalone, right? So ab that's just like fresh well, abalone. I'm, I'm prepared to have a go. It's, and then this is like a salt and pepper squid type abalone. Lobster, obviously. Mm. Scallops. And you know your food, don't you? I know my seafood, and I know this is as good as anything, anything in the world. That is fresh. Try the crayfish. It, is, is this really a job, Andrew? Yeah, mate, it's hard work. Is it? You, you've done this for years, haven't you? Mm. Do you like it? Mm. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's unbelievable. Could this get any better? How good is golf? How good is golf? Cheers. Good luck. You too. Interested? Of course you are. The smoothest flight is above the clouds, so we chose Air Adventures to get us here. Meet us at Essendon Airport. We do absolutely everything for you, so all of your flights, your accommodation, your golf, that's all arranged for you ahead of time. King Island's been immensely popular, but the beauty of having your own private aircraft is that it goes wherever you want to go. We link Barn uh, down in the northeastern coast of Tasmania with King Island, so you can play four world-class courses in four days. Ocean Dunes is only part of the King Island story. It's a tribute to true Lynx golf, creativity and ingenuity. The story continues. Day two on King Island, and now Kate Wickham. But all the talk of how quickly conditions can change came true. This is exactly what I expected of King Island. I mean, we're in the middle of Bass Strait. When it blows, it blows incredibly hard. It's currently gusting upwards of 90 kilometres an hour. Now, no one's saying this is too windy for golf. Paul Gauss is just too windy for golf. So given the forecast said it's going to abate, we'll give that a chance and then we'll come out when it settles down. But how good is golf? So the wind didn't really abate, but it has changed direction. Should be interesting though. So what's your first impression of the number 23 ranked golf course on the planet? What, what is it? On the planet. Well, I've heard so much, but seen so little. My favourite thing is that it's like Pebble Beach and Royal Dornick had a love child, and this is it. Only it's more beautiful than Pebble and better than Dornick. So that's to be seen. Well, today in these conditions, we're going to have to play the ball on the ground. That, that was how they started the game, was on the ground. Forget about hitting your wedge 120 metres. You're going to have to play it on the ground. Roll it on the ground. Putt it from 100 metres. Okay. It's a different game for you today. I'll let, I'll, I'll let you show me. Okay. Oh, go run! Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. That's one of your best ever. It is a heady start, and it's just the beginning of what owner Duncan Andrews knew had to be a world-class experience. I only took the risk of doing this because I thought if you're ever going to get something in the top 100, this could be the spot to do it. Simple as that. Uh, if we didn't get in the top 100, we probably failed. And if we didn't get in the top 100, we didn't give the people the reason to come and visit us. And it, it's, uh, as you found out, it's fairly remote. 
What I love about those first two holes is they were really generous. You know, yeah. we were perched up a little bit, wind was blowing left to right, but really generous fairways. They're just warming me into the round. Lull you in. Well, gently bring you into the game. A bit of false sense of security yeah. there. Yeah. Massive yeah. fairways, yeah. though you missed the second, yeah. they were generous. And when I got to the third, he said, wake up. And now I've woken up because this is a massive par three with a big green <laughs> straight into the wind, Arr! 170 metres across ravine. I've now woken up. <laughs> Go! Oh, great shot. <laughs> Fighting that in oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. invisible hang on. ladder. It's there! <laughs> How did that get there? Because it's a two iron. <laughs> a multi two iron. Oh, go on, I'll oh, go on. Oh. Team, certainly wake you up. It is the biggest green on the, on the golf course, yes. but they've put a short pin in here. How good does that look? I th well, this is the thing. So Rick, who's the local legend, right, plays yeah. off two baseball grip, left hand, the best golfer on the island. Yeah. He said that people get to here and think it's amazing, and then they get through the first time they go, it can't get better, and then it does get better. And when they get to the end, which we got a sniff off from the clubhouse, those last three holes, it's just to die for. To die for. Oh, dynamite! I see you changed your hat. Yeah, I did. Well, is it better? Oh, yeah. It means I can't hear you much. Perched at the northeastern tip of King Island, Kate Wickham is undoubtedly the new darling of Australian golf, and for very good reason. Pardon the cliche, but it really is breathtaking. I think I've worked out why these are so good. It's because it's like true destination golf. Yeah. You know, like you book your ticket. You're really excited, you get on a little plane, you get more excited, you arrive at the golf course and you just start going, oh my God. Yeah, and then you get to this oh. and just, it's, and this is why everyone's going, it's so good. Yeah, well, well it is, no, without a doubt. It's, it's the excitement, it's the build up yeah. and you finally get here and you get to play all these holes and they all just sort of move into each other. Going a little bit right on the wind. Well controlled. Oh. Oh, 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 oh my god! Over! Ocean vistas, water carries, wind, and a heaving, pounding surf will no doubt plant the course in the memory banks. Ever present is the Cape Wickham Lighthouse, the tallest in Australia. It serves as a beacon for sailors and the occasional aiming point for golfers. There's lots of talk about the options available to get your ball to the hole. Like Ocean Dunes, Kate Wickham asks you to use your imagination to consider the road less travelled. Yes, you can fly the ball to the green, but when the wind blows, keeping the ball low and on the ground could be the better play. It's the bohemian rhapsody of golf. It's great from the very beginning, but really, Kate Wickham is all about the big finish. 16, 17 and 18 are huge. One of the things I keep hearing about Kate Wickham is how good the end is, the last three. Well, I've just heard it's, uh, it's memorable. Yep. They, you remember these last three holes. And here on 16, we're going straight back into the breeze, the ocean on the right, but the fairway campers, three levels left to right. Obviously, you have to hit a golf shot here. Yeah. You know, you've really got to turn one into the hill and, uh, or play along with the hill and take on the ocean. Water, water everywhere. There's rocky outcrops, wind in your face. This is worth the work, the travel. This is true golfing excellence. One night we were, Darius and Mike DeVries and I were talking, and Mike said, you know, we've got to be awfully careful of sensory overload. He said, no, look, if we do this, if we keep on the ocean the whole time, people, uh, they'll get numb to it. And I, I thought that was, oh, yeah, yeah, right. And the next morning, Darius Oliver and I walk, were walking around the course and we got to this spot right here and Darius has sort of looked at the drive 
And he said, oh, it's not that good a drive. And I, and I go, Darius, excuse me. And you know what you just said? He said, what, what? I said, you said this wasn't that good a drive. No, I didn't, I didn't. It's sensory overload. So that was the key to go into the ocean, off the ocean, back into the ocean, so that you didn't get sensory overload. He's on the beach. Of course, you want to make the fairway, but then what an opportunity for a memorable golf shot. Beach, baby, beach, baby, give me your hands. Give me a shot that I can remember. Oh, yes! Just like before when we walked at the door in the moonlight. Come on. <laughs> Short again. Hey, listen. That was fantastic. Mate, good to play golf with you again. And, and yeah, and the great call about those last three holes, that was great. I mean, it was great. Fantastic finish. Yeah, I think they were really good, yeah. those last three holes, and the golf course itself. But great is something like Royal Melbourne and Kingston Heath that, that many, many people have played it. Thousands of rounds yeah. to, to get that stature of being great. So maybe what this needs is time and give history a chance to even make that decision and to get it right. And I think they'll get it right. Right. So it could be great. I think it could be great. On the way to great. <laughs> you can't avoid comparing Ocean Dunes with Kate Wickham. You can't. But how do you compare them? It's like choosing between offspring. For the record, as a course, Gowie liked Ocean Dunes, as did I. But we didn't play Kate Wickham without the wind. And we didn't play Ocean Dunes with the wind. So you see the conundrum they're almost impossible to compare.